Hello, Economic Analysis Social Issues students. I uh, hope everyone has a been having a good weekend. And um, I want to introduce myself. I'm Joe Barnhill. I'll be your instructor for the next uh, seven weeks. We get one week that we have a break with the July 4th week. But uh, for the first week, uh, what I want you to do is uh, read chapters one and two. I want to know that in this course you have something called McGraw-Hill Connect. So when you go into that Connect, if you click on the Connect, it, it should link you to the activities for the smart book and the quizzes. I, I had to kind of test it out earlier in the week with uh, the folks at McGraw-Hill, but I think it's working okay. But if not, let me know right away, and we'll get it fixed. But our course officially starts tomorrow on um, Monday. But it, in terms of what I want you to do for this first week, we're going to ease into it a little bit. Uh, obviously, read chapters one and two. Then I want you to do the smart book. And then you're going to do the quiz, okay? And in this week, you're going to first look at Chapter 1, the idea of kind of a definition of economics, the idea of opportunity costs, especially as we look at it from a production possibility curve. The production possibility curve is going to have this bowed-out shape. Um, it demonstrates that law of increasing opportunity cost as I switch production from one good to another good within an economy. Now, it's a very simplified example. The assumption we make is there's only two goods produced. We know that's not reality. There's thousands and thousands of goods produced in the economy. Uh, but in terms of showing the principle of opportunity cost, that's what we're trying to demonstrate there. And you're going to look at points that are efficient that are on the curve, a point that's inefficient inside the curve where we had really high unemployment. That would be an example of an inefficient point. And a point that outside the curve that we can't get to given our limited resources and technology and the people that we have. Now, we can advance, shift that curve out over the years, but at least in the temporary time period, we're going to be fixed. And we can also learn that we can get to points outside that curve by engaging the trade, and that's why many economists are in favor of trade, and they don't like embargoes and quotas and tariffs and try to restrict trade. So you kind of allow the nations that have a comparative advantage in producing goods and services to focus on those goods and we allow, like other nations like Japan, to produce small lawnmower engines, and we're really good at producing wheat. And by engaging in trade, we can get to a point outside our production possibility curve. The other chapter is kind of the meat and potatoes of economics with supply and demand. Um, obviously, you're going to look at supply and demand curves. We have price on the uh, vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis, and a demand curve is an inverse relationship. So as price goes up, we expect less quantity demanded and supply as you are willing to pay more, businesses are willing to supply more of the market. And you're going to get to this point of what we call like a market equilibrium where the two functions intersect. And that's where price and quantity is determined in the market. But two important things I want to make sure to distinguish with definitions. A change in quantity demanded or a change in quantity supplied is simply a movement along the demand or supply curve. So if the price of Coke goes up from $2 for a 2-liter bottle to $3, uh, people are going to move along that demand curve. Now, there are factors other than price that you'll read about in your readings that shift the demand curve or shift the supply curve. So shifts of demand can be due to taste and preferences. You know, we spend a lot of money on advertising, try to convince people to buy more of a particular product. It can deal with incomes, it can deal with taxes and subsidies, it can deal with expectations. But these are all factors outside of price that can shift that demand curve. So if Oprah says you need to go out and read this particular book, all of a sudden the demand curve for that book shifts out. As a result, you see a higher price for that book and you see four people reading that book in that market. Supply has similar things that impact it. Uh, taxes and subsidies, expectations, but technology is a big one too. Typically, like with electronic goods, when they first come out, they're very expensive. But as we find better ways to produce them in mass quantities, uh, same thing like electric cars are going to get cheaper and cheaper eventually. But that supply curve will push out. As a result of pushing out, the price will drop, and you'll see more people driving electric cars. So, well, that's a brief overview this week. I do want you to email me if you have any questions. Again, we kind of enter the week a little bit light. Uh, but we'll pick it up in following weeks with forum discussions. I'll get to know you all a little bit better and respond to your posts. But uh, do have a great week, and I look forward to working with you online. Take care.